Could the Neuralink chip give us bionic hearing? We normally read articles about the incredible potential of Elon Musk's company and the wonders that it will unlock. But today the answer seems to be a little bit uncertain. Let's see why. It all started with the article Can Neuralink Be Effective for Bionic Hearing? published recently in the Hearing Journal. As the title implies, the article discussed about the effectiveness of Neuralink implant for hearing loss treatment. But first of all, we must ask ourselves, why do we need a chip in our brains to hear? Aren't normal hearing aids enough? After all, hearing aids are simpler devices, they do not require any sort of nasty surgery, potentially dangerous surgery to the brain, and they're also for sure less expensive than brain implants. But to answer this question, we must first understand how hearing works. So first of all, we know that the sound waves, they reach the eardrum, which starts vibrating. As a response, three tiny bones in the ear vibrate themselves and vibrations are transmitted to the cochlea, where there is a fluid, the fluid starts moving and this movement is transduced into electrical signals, which travel through the auditory nerve to the brain. Now, simpler hearing aids work by amplifying sound waves. They work in a very simple way, but they're not enough for people who have inner ear or auditory nerve problems, so they're not suited for severe loss of hearing. And for these serious cases, surgery is required for an implant. But before talking about Neuralink solution, it's helpful to understand the basics at least of these implants, because there are other types of implants that are used to treat these sort of hearing loss problems. There were several types of implants discussed in the article, and we see them in order of how deep they go along the auditory path. So we talk first of all about middle ear implant, cochlear implants, auditory brainstem and midbrain implants, and finally auditory cortical implants. The common elements of these implants include a microphone, a processor and a transmitter. So the sound waves arrive to a microphone, they are transduced into electrical signals which are processed by the processor and then they are transmitted to different parts of the head basically. So first of all we see the middle ear implant the middle ear implants basically use signals that are sent to a specific system inside the ear, inside the middle ear, which stimulates mechanically by vibration the middle ear bones, the bones that we have seen before, and then these vibrations are sent to the auditory nerve. So basically they substitute part of the external ear. The cochlear implants instead are probably the most well known of all these implants. The concept is a bit similar, but the stimulation is no more mechanically, is no more about vibration it's about sending electrical signals. So basically there are electrodes which are implanted within the cochlea, hence the name cochlear implant, and these electrodes they stimulate electrically the auditory nerve, specifically the cochlear nerve within the cochlea. So the signals are then transmitted to the auditory nerve and sounds are recreated. Basically they can bypass damaged middle ear cells. So let's go now a little bit deeper, let's talk about the brain. Because not all implants work on the middle ear or on the external ear, some implants work on the brain. And in this sense, they can bypass any damage to the auditory nerve. So while they are externally similar to previous implants because they always have a processor and a microphone and a transmitter, this time the electrodes we are implanted is specifically part of the brain. We're talking about in case of brainstem implant, they're implanted in the dorsa and ventral cochlear nuclei. In the case of midbrain implant, they are implanted in inferior colliculus, and in case of cortical implant, of course, in the auditory cortex. When we talk about performances of the implants, we have to remember that these implants, of course, are not able of reproducing the sound that we would normally hear with a healthy, of course, ear and auditory nerve and whatever. Cochlear implants, for example, they have low resolution and the audio sounds a little bit digital. We can hear in these samples how a person with a cochlear implant hears. What kind of bait do you use to catch salmon? What kind of bait do you use to catch salmon? But in case of brain implants, there is even worse performance. For this reason, they are required only for very severe cases of hearing loss. 
And the reason is that affected patients, they lack functionality from the auditory nerve fiber. So of course, some part of the auditory path is missing, is not functioning properly. So the sound is not heard as you would have, for example, a healthy person. In case of the brain implants that I've mentioned, only the brain stem implants are used. In fact, the other ones are still under research. The other implants have not been approved, for example, in the United States by the FDA, the Food and Drugs Administration. For the people who are not American, the FDA is responsible, amongst other things, for approving medical devices. Cortical implants, the last type, and also the most interesting, have also higher risks of inflammation and biocompatibility, which is a problem that we have seen also discussed during Neuralink presentation. So let's talk now seriously about Neuralink. Neuralink solution is comparable to the auditory cortex implant because let's remember how Neuralink works. Neuralink technical solution is about implanting flexible electrodes in the brain, specifically in specific parts of the cortex. In this case, in case to solve some hearing loss problems in specific areas of the auditory cortex. So that's why they're similar to auditory cortex implants. And for this reason, they have similar limitations to what current auditory cortex implants under research have. So basically, they have low resolution, low spatial resolution. They're not capable of reproducing a broad range of frequencies, of hearing frequencies. And in fact, this is a bit far from Neuralink claim and Elon Musk claim of developing bionic hearing. You know, there was a claim about being able to hear beyond the normal frequencies but in fact cortical implants go in the opposite direction being able not to cover even the range of frequencies that normal healthy human ears are capable to hear so uh, we're a bit far from Neuralink claims but what we can hope is that research will become more advanced in the near future and we can hope for Neuralink to contribute to it and to develop a solution that will finally help people with severe hearing loss problems. Now let me know in the comments if you have had any experience with hearing aids or these types of implants, for example cochlear implants, or if you know people with these implants. And what are your experiences and what are your thoughts on a potentially realistic future for this technology beyond the claims of Neuralink. Thank you very much for watching, my name is Peolo, see you next time.